Welcome to Scarlet Nexus, better known as Big Brain and the Power of Friendship. Developed by Nandai Bamco, don't go expecting another code vein, as I'll tell you from the jump that Scarlet Nexus offers a radically different experience. The game follows the story of Yuito and Kasame in two different campaigns, but I'll be using the content from Yuito's story for any references made in this video. The overarching story is the same for the two characters, but the details that you see in between certain moments are going to differ depending on who you pick to play as. So I finished the game going through Yuito's story, I didn't skip any of the main story cutscenes, and my playtime ended at about 19 hours and 58 minutes, so we'll just round that up to 20 hours total. This was me focusing primarily on the main story, I didn't do much farming, maybe only about half an hour total of that, and I didn't go out of my way to do any side quests. The main story itself I actually appreciated more as the story progressed and we got more information. It's nothing to write home about, but it's a solid piece of fiction. Thousands of years prior to the events of the game, a catastrophic event occurred creating the extinction belt over the earth. This extinction belt led to the arrival of the Others, the main enemies of the game that feast on human brains. 99.9% .9 of the human population have power is tied to their mental capacity, and those strong enough to fight back are primarily found in the OSF, a force dedicated to protecting humanity from the Others. Both of our playable protagonists join the OSF for their own reasons, and as the plot develops, they learn more about the government they fight under, the others, themselves, and how it all links together. And while I did love the story, I think one of the main things that dragged it down was the presentation of the cutscenes. Presented in a still panel style reminiscent of a comic or a manga, it initially had a charm that I liked, but then, after the occasional appearance of a fully animated cutscene, the still panels started to get on my nerves because... They clearly went through and made some fully animated cutscenes, so why couldn't every cutscene be like that? I just thought it was weird, because at some moments you'd have a character that is exiting the scene, so they'd be walking away, but instead it'd just be one frame of them walking, another frame, and then suddenly they just fade away while everyone is still standing there doing absolutely nothing at all. Bonus points to the fact that accessories that you pull on your teammates are still visible during cutscenes though, that's great. But speaking of teammates, I want to talk about the characters next, which is the one thing that hurts me the most about Scarlet Nexus. The game has a big cast overall. I mean, you have nine characters that are going to be in your playable party, and then there's other characters that are important to the story that do make their appearances frequently. They do a good job of managing it and making sure that various characters do have their moments to shine throughout the story. So these teammates have a thing called a bond level, which will affect the strength of their SAS, which I'll go over more when we talk about combat. In order to increase this bond level, you need to talk to them, give them gifts based on their personality and hobbies, and then enter special bond episodes with them. Think social links from Persona or companion quests from Mass Effect. And these are cute little cutscenes where you learn about the life and the quirks and the issues that your allies face and you help them develop and understand them better. But ultimately, it all feels like a facade. These characters do have interesting personalities, albeit some are kind of cliche. And you feel this during the Bond episodes and based on the gifts that you give them. But then nowhere else in the gameplay or even really the story do you see this. These characters are alive for just a cutscene at a time and then they just go back to being meat shields once you enter regular gameplay. There's little reference to these side developments that happen during the Bond episodes, which is completely unassisted by the lack of interactive character banter during combat or when exploring the world. But this is definitely something that could easily be fixed. All you have to do is add a patch that adds a lot of voice lines and that's pretty much solved. So in short, characters, good. Bond episodes, good. But they don't capitalize off of them at all. But it could be fixed. And as dull as the combat dialogue is with every character yelling at you to do it when brain crushes are available, the environments try their best to counter it. Large cities, subways, construction sites, highways, a lot of generic locations that still look pretty thanks to the art style. However, later story locations add a lot of unique flavor and I appreciated each of them but hated how late they appeared in the story. Combat is the crown jewel of Scarlet Nexus. Yuito uses a sword and Kasame flings razors around but both have access to psychokinesis, practically telekinesis, turning any object ungrounded or waiting to be into a high damaging projectile. Combat initially revolves around using the weapon and psychokinesis seamlessly to strike, dodge, throw, and repeat, using Russian attacks after throwing an object to close the gap, and psychokinesis follow-ups to fall back and continue to onslaught from a distance. But the true death of combat comes from the SAS system. The SAS system allows party members to give the playable character their own power for a short time, modifying combat accordingly. Early on in Yuito's story, he gains access to teleportation, pyrokinesis, clairvoyance, and sclerokinesis from his four teammates. Initially, you can only use one at a time, but the skill tree actually grants use of two and then four at the same time as you get the upgrade nodes. This opens up the gameplay for some crafty and cool moments. 
For example, Skirokinesis gives Yuito the ability to straight up tank hits, taking no damage and instead reducing the timer on his use of the power. You can combine this with Pyrokinesis for increased weapon damage and range for a great method of taking out a crowd of enemies while being entirely out of harm's way. And then these SAS abilities are amplified even more as you increase the bond level of teammates to the point where you unlock even more mechanics such as the combo vision, which allows you to assume the image of an ally and perform an attack as them, which seems simple but can add a lot of utility, for example, launching an enemy in the air or using an attack that has an evasive movement initially or one that has one that has a gap closer even. By the end of the game, I was getting a little giddy over just finding right combinations of powers that really just plowed through enemies. And I was playing on hard difficulty too. So finding things that really work together to make it easier for me felt amazing. And the real dark horse of the game, in my opinion, is the music. At least come with us. Can we acknowledge the bop that's playing right now? Can I, hold on, let's skip the Hold on. Hey. Reminds me of a summer where I met the woman who stole my heart. A fiery spirit that no water could put out. And her name was Selena. We met in the blazing summer while I was vacationing in Mexico. And she took my heart. Oh, she took my heart. But she made me feel like a man. A man who could become so much more. Oh, Talina. This song reminds me of the way that she danced on the dance floor. With hips. They're her hips that moved. Ebb and flow like the water of the ocean. And the eyes that sparkled as such. Oh, Selena. In the end, how do I really feel about Scarlet Nexus? The game does have a lot of high moments, especially during combat, and even a couple of the story beats were really, really good. But with the characters not being as present as they are during the Bond episodes, which is such an important part of the game, such an important part of the theme, having this friendship, working together, being a team, that kind of leaves a bad feeling. With about 20 hours playtime to finish Yuito's story, I'm not sure if Kasane's story would take much longer. It should be about the same based on the fact that they do have the same overarching story. Add the fact that you can actually carry a lot of the stuff from your first playthrough into your second playthrough if you decide to play as the other character. I think you'll get a good amount of time for how much you'll be paying if you get the game on sale. Scarlet Nexus feels like a really good $30 to $40 experience. And although I paid the full $60 for it, I don't actually regret it that much because I love the combat that much and the story was actually pretty interesting in my opinion. So my final verdict for Scarlet Nexus is to wait for a sale, get it for $30 to $40, and any fan of the hack and slash genre will get themselves a nice combat system with a cool story attached to it. And as for the future of Scarlet Nexus, I hope we do get some DLC. Uh, I think that'd be really interesting to get some new areas, maybe even a new power or two, just for having some extra side characters that join the cast for just for the expansion part. And uh, I think they definitely have what it takes to make a sequel, continuing the story. I don't want to give any major spoilers, but there's definitely potential for DLC and even a sequel, I believe. So hopefully the future for Scarlet Nexus is looking bright because I, for one, am a fan.